All right, in this video, I want to talk about the inverse Laplace transform and just do a simple example of finding the uh, inverse Laplace transform. And um, just an important theorem and kind of definition here that basically says what we're doing is legitimate. So the theorem says, suppose that f and g are continuous functions and that the Laplace transform of f of s is equal to the Laplace transform of g of s for s greater than a. Then what that says is it says those functions f and g are the same for all t values greater than zero. So basically it says if uh, if the Laplace transform is the same, uh, it had to be just the same single function. So what it says is a function is uniquely determined by its Laplace transform. So that's that's an important idea. Um, two different functions can't have the same Laplace transform, is what it's saying. Okay. So just a little definition here. So if f is a continuous function of exponential order and the Laplace transform of little f of s equals capital F of s, we say uh, we call little f the inverse Laplace transform of capital F, and we denote it just by writing f equals uh, l to the minus one of capital F. Okay. So just in terms of definitions, it says if the Laplace transform of little f is capital F. That means the inverse Laplace transform of capital F is going to give you little f back. All right, so uh, let's do a very simple example here of finding the, uh, the inverse Laplace transform of this function. Uh, f of s equals 1 over s minus 3 minus 16 over s squared plus 9. So we're just going to take the, uh, the inverse Laplace transform of both sides. OK, so. Uh, the Laplace transform is linear, so we can break this up into uh, separate pieces, kind of like if you're taking a derivative or a, an antiderivative. So now a lot of it just comes back to finding sort of the appropriate, um, you know, to go back to, ha to using your little uh, table of transforms uh, that I think we mentioned a minute ago. So if you look at this first... Uh, this first expression, 1 over s minus 3, well, that looks a lot like uh, this expression ex instead of the a value. Well, we've got 3. So it says the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 3 is going to be e to the 3t. Okay, so here it says we'll simply get, well, e to the 3t. Okay, again, just using uh, our table. And let's see, so then we're doing the inverse Laplace transform of 16 over s squared plus 9. Uh, let's see here. So, okay, so notice uh, we've got a, our variable squared and a number and a number. Um, so let's see uh, where'd it go. So cosine, notice that has the variable, the variable squared and the number squared. So I don't think that is, is what we need. But notice, um, I think our, we can use our little sine of a of t. So to me, this expression 16 over s squared plus 9 looks a lot like um, a over s squared plus a squared. And I think we're going to have to do a little bit of algebra here to, uh, to make that happen. So again, nothing crazy here. So this is s squared plus, well, we could write 9 simply as 3 squared. OK, so we've got 3 squared. Whatever number is being squared in the denominator, um, you know, our a squared, we want that number to be in the numerator as well. So since we have 3 squared, that means I would want a 3 in the numerator. But well, um, you know, the original numerator had a 16, so I can't just make it a 3. Well, 3 times 16 over 3. If you do the arithmetic, hey, everything's going to cancel out, and we'll get back our 16 over s squared plus 9. And the reason I'm doing this simply is, well, first off, to make it agree with the table. And also, uh, remember, we can factor constants uh, outside of the Laplace transform and also the inverse Laplace transform. So um, we can pull that 16 over 3 out front. And then we're just left with the inverse Laplace transform of 3 over s squared plus 3 squared. And now we get uh, we get what we need because, again, uh, we just use our little formula. We've got 3 on top. We've got 3 squared on the bottom. We have our variable squared, our s squared. Um, so it says we'll get sine of the number in the numerator which is going to be, in this case, just 3. And then we multiply that by t. And now we have found our inverse Laplace transform of this original uh, 
uh, f of s equals 1 over s minus 3 minus 16 over s squared plus 9. So um, nothing crazy, it's just kind of matching up uh, the expressions with, with, you know, stuff in a table is really all it amounts to. Uh, you may have to manipulate things a little bit just to make them algebraically uh, equivalent to, you know, to make it match up with one of the, uh, you know, obviously one of the... Uh, the formulas here in the table. But this one again is pretty straightforward. Some other common tricks, you may have to use partial fractions. Um, I'll definitely do an example where we use partial fractions here in a different video.